First airing on Cartoon Network on April 5th, 2010, Mystery Incorporated has to be one of the most underrated shows on the channel. Many saw as another Scooby-Doo reboot trying to cash in, but for those who have seen it, it's much more. The show is praised for its interesting plot, fun moments, and darker tone. My favorite part of the show would have to be a particular character, Sheriff Stone. Voiced by Patrick Warburton, he is extremely hilarious. Oh, Janet Mayor Nettles, this is so amazing. I just learned how to make a sombrero out of bacon. And here I thought these couples cooking classes were going to be lame or rama city. Yeah. We're on a stakeout. In a patrol car? Yes, now move along. Nothing to see here. Hey, how are we supposed to make incredibly bad and stupid decisions that will wreck the rest of our lives over here with all that noise? Quiet, long hair. Well, that'll be our powwow, man. Where do I set up my smoker? Today I'll be exploring 10 of the best and most unnerving episodes of Mr. Incorporated. And if you haven't seen the show yet, I will be spoiling some moments from it. So let's begin. The night the clown cried, the night the clown cried, too. Tears of doom. After the gang splits up in the season one finale, Crystal Cove has nobody to stop a new menace. Crybaby Clown. An evil man dressed as a huge overweight baby that's also a clown and is voiced by the legendary Joker, Mark Hamill. Man, baby, not real. Man, baby, not real. <laughs> you don't like Crybaby Clown? <laughs> that hurts my feelings. Maybe you're just hungry. Drink up. The new mayor is approached by a mysterious figure who gives her files on the whereabouts of the gang in hopes to rid Crystal Cove of their clown infestation. The mayor helps Scooby escape from the farm he's been trapped on. Scooby then goes on to help Shaggy escape from his military school. The duo soon find Fred, who became a hobo in his effort to find his real parents. When they get back to Crystal Cove, the three are attacked by Crybaby Clown, but are saved by the mysterious figure, who turns out to be Velma. Nice verbib. Wait. Wry sense of humor, tinged with a whiff of disdain and superiority. Velma? Who were you expecting? Rorschach? Afterwards, they find Daphne, who's, to Fred's shock, has a new boyfriend. His name is Baylor Hotner a parody of the Twilight actor, Taylor Lautner. So without Daphne, they set up a trap at the donut factory, which fails without the whole Mystery Inc. being there, causing Crybaby Clown to escape and blow up a fireworks shop. By the way, building a little donut shop trap next to a fireworks store might not have been the best idea. See you soon, Mystery Indoctorated. In the following episode, the House of the Nightmare Witch, Hot Dog Water, also known as Marcy, replaces Daphne, and they are able to stop the Russian witch in her chicken-legged house. This is based on Baba Yaga, old Russian folklore. It's pretty crazy. In the part two episode, Crybaby Clown returns to kidnap a therapist, a hairdresser, a plastic surgeon, a publicist, and eventually Daphne. So the gang tracks down Crybaby Clown to the airport where he hijacks a plane. Shaggy and Scooby are able to get onto the plane to free the five captives, but are chased around. Fred is able to get on the plane and defeat the man baby. Once the plane lands, it is revealed that Crybaby Clown was really Baylor Hotner in an overly complicated plan to make his next movie. The Shrieking Madness The creature of Chargar Gothagon, also known as the creature that has no name, begins to terrify Darrow University campus. The gang finds out that he is after author H.P. Hatecraft, an obvious parody. 
This episode is based off the Cthulhu mythos in general, but the creature screams is destroying everything in its path. After an awful song played by Ernesto's band, the creature attacks and takes Hatecraft. The creature heads to the roof of Hatecraft's home in order to end his life. The gang confronts him and are able to stop Charter Gothagon. They save him and reveal that he's actually Hatecraft's student, assistant who was matter of the author's recent decisions. To me, this mirrors the death of John Lennon. Lennon was killed by Mark David Chapman, a longtime Beatles fan who was mad over the claim that the band is more popular than Jesus. My new brothers are gonna teach me a move called Happy Tapioca. I don't know what it is, but apparently uh, I'll be blindfolded and submerged in pudding. <laughs> See you around. Old Happy Tapioca. Tapioca, Tapioca. The Midnight Zone. Cassidy Williams, a former member of the original Mystery Incorporated, is attacked by Nazi robots. She seeks out the gang in order to investigate. Hit the dirt! With the help of Tom and Tub, two boys with a sub, they go underwater. After exploring the undersea town that had sank many years ago, they are attacked by more of the World War II era bots. Eventually, they find an underwater base, which is where the robots are being constructed. Expecting to find out who is running the place, they find the decomposing corpse of Frau Abigail Gluck. It's over, Miss October Pess. Call off the bots. Ah! Why, that is worse than robots? Nabiru. It is revealed that this was all controlled by Professor Pericles to find the last piece of the planispheric disc. He escapes and sets the factory to self-destruct. They all head back to the sub, but someone has to keep the gate open. Cassie decides to do so, giving Daphne a heartfelt speech. The base explodes, and later Cassidy's cracked helmet is found on the shore. This episode is a major turning point in the show, killing off a major character and turning Pericles into the primary villain. I'm sure she got out. Right, guys? Like, yeah. Definitely. She saved us. I guess maybe we were wrong about Cassidy. Howl of the Fright Hound In this parody of the first Terminator film, the Crystal Cove Animal Asylum is attacked by the Fright Hound. It also attacks the tour bus belonging to Velma's mom, which results in her passing out. Sheriff Stone comes to investigate and charges Scooby with the crimes. Please here caught his collar on the wreckage. It fell off before he ran away. But how could that collar be Scooby's? He's still wearing his. Well, he's obviously a mastermind criminal dog. He's bound to have a closet full of collars back home. The next day, the gang decide to visit him at the asylum. Daphne accidentally opens the locket she found from the first episode, which alerts Professor Pericles. In his first ever appearance, he warns Fred of what is to come and severely electrocutes the yard. I'm sure you will find out. Meanwhile, I will dispense this bit of advice. Beware of those closest to you. I'm specifically talking to you, Frederick. On their way home, they are attacked by the Fright Hound, which is of course a robot. They go visit a student from their high school, Jason, and they question him. He gets mad and wishes to never talk to them again. After talking to Sheriff Stone, the asylum is once again attacked. Supposing this robot dog really exists, how do I know he doesn't belong to your real dog? The mastermind criminal dog. He's bound to have a closet full of robot dogs back home. Shaggy rescues Scooby and the mystery machine runs out of gas. They hide in a factory, but the robot finds them. With the help of a forklift and some machinery, they are able to kill it and find the culprit, Jason's mom. At the end of the episode, it is revealed that Pericles escaped. Moving the events of the show forward. Sheriff, 
Bronson Stone. Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Just want to let you know that all the animals are accounted for, except one. Theater of Doom. The Crystal Cove Historical Society performs a play every year. The play revolves around Friar Sarah and his donkey Porto. However, during this year's rehearsal, a specter attacks the cast. The specter is revealed to be the ghost of Friar Sarah, who does not want his story to be told. The gang decides to aid Vincent Van Gogh to help fix up the play. Danger! You are all in horrible danger! <laughs> To stop him. Friar Sarah attempts to ruin the play, but is trapped. Luckily for Vincent, the audience and the critic all think this was part of the play. But the end of the episode is where it turns dark. The gang finds a coffin of the real Friar Sarah. He comes out of his coffin and delivers a speech to the gang. Evil manipulated Porto. Porto set out to destroy the town. Before, I was able to retrieve the one piece he took. Nibiru is coming. This has all happened before. It begins with the animal. Always the animal. Heed the warning of the alligators. The dog dies. His line of, the dog dies is a reference to the second episode, when the light of the motel spells this out. Friar Sarah is one of the many affected by the curse of Crystal Cove. During his speech, he also mentions Porto going mad with power from the disc pieces they found. When the Cicadas Call This episode starts with an employee of Destroido getting into his car to head home. He gets a call from a strange sounding man, who wants him to heed his previous warnings. He of course hangs up. A cicada begins to annoy him, with more and more of them showing up. Then, a huge swarm infests his car and carries it, almost killing him. The gang tries to investigate it, but are stopped by Fred's dad and Sheriff Stone. Calm down, it's just a bug. Help, help! <laughs> Thank you, Ick. Dad? Oh no. Later that night, another employee of Destroido is at his home, about to take a shower. He gets a call similar to the one that the other man got. He hangs up and jumps in, but the shower isn't working. He bends over to see what's going on, and a bunch of cicadas appear from the drain and swarm him. Oh. What is that? A bug? The gang is finally able to investigate him alongside Grandma Moonbeam, another Destroido employee. As they leave the hospital, the cicada creature brings them to the basement to warn that if they don't stop their investigations, they will pay the price. After false leads from one of the teachers, Ed Machine is swarmed while playing golf. What? In order to profit from the attacks, a festival is set up by the town. Shaggy suggests they go into a haunted maze to follow their teacher. They do so and are attacked. Since Fred is an expert at traps, obviously, he prepares for this and sucks up all the bugs of a vacuum. Grandma Moonbeam is caught and is revealed that she wanted revenge over Destroido, ruining her recipes. A Haunting in Crystal Cove Fred's supposed dad, the mayor, is being haunted by a terrifying cloaked figure. So much so that he eventually runs out of the house, leaving Fred very confused. You! No! Not again! Ha 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 ha! 
The next day at school, he tells the rest of the gang. Shaggy and Scooby agree to stay over for the night to keep him company. Later that night, after watching a bunch of movies, the duo go into the kitchen to make a pizza. Then, the pizza comes alive and tries to attack them. It's really quiet out there. The pizza is aggressive. Oh shit. Fred and his dad are also attacked and are scared out of the house. The following night, the whole gang comes over with Lady Marmalade, Voodoo Priestess, and Professional Exorcist to perform a ritual to determine what spirit is angry with Fred's dad. The ritual goes sideways and Fred's dad is taken. They go back to the house and discover that the mayor faked getting kidnapped to go back for his disc piece. But then he is actually taken moments later. A trap is set and they catch the ghost, who turns out to be Pericles. Why do you think I wanted this piece of the planispheric disc, of course? I knew he would have it close. I just didn't know where, so I decided to scare it out of him. He claims that Jones took the piece from him a long time ago. He escapes with the piece to soon be seen again. Attack of the Headless Horror Being my personal favorite episode, it starts with an Indiana Jones-like intro. Rick Spartan, his wife Marion, and his assistant Kachinga are at a temple to obtain a shrunken head. Marion is injured, Kachinga goes for medical equipment, and Rick decides to go to the temple himself. He enters, rolling a large stone towards Marion. He opens the chest and is startled. Take not my head or a curse on you. My body shall forever avenge the wrong you do. A curse? This day just gets better and better. You were warned! <laughs> After this intro, we are introduced to Fred breaking many traffic laws in order to get to school. Velma questions this. Fred reveals that their new biology teacher is Rick Spartan, taking a break for adventures. He is, of course, a really lousy teacher, but befriends a group. He invites them for dinner at his place, which Fred agrees to. After having some steak, he takes him to the the shrunken head. The headless horror comes to attack, but with the help of some spears, he goes away. figure out a spell that can break the curse, but this fails and they are attacked. Rick is severely injured, but some clues are found. Sheriff Stone arrests Kachinga, thinking that this was him. Thinking that the curse is over, Rick is excited to go exploring again, once he is healed. The Headless Horror begins to chase them throughout the hospital, until he is trapped. Marion was behind it, using a super elaborate plan, even more elaborate than Baylor's, so she can just take a break from going to the jungle. She's not charged and they have pizza, even with Sheriff Stone. Sure, why not? All fear the freak. 
The season one finale begins with a flashback to the original Mystery Incorporated, finding one of the disc pieces before being attacked by a mysterious figure. It then cuts to the present, with Fred and his dad having a quiet talk about his mom and what's to come. Fred eventually takes the keys to his office in the town hall and calls the gang. They go to explore the room because of their suspicions. They find a scroll of disc pieces, a picture frame of Fred's mom that's broken, but is revealed that the picture was from a magazine. They are then attacked by a shadowy figure known as the Freak of Crystal Cove. Is some kind of graveyard cool? Me prefer Freak. Freak of Crystal Cove. They are chased out of the hall before running into Sheriff Stone. After getting bailed out of jail by their respective parents, Shaggy and Scooby are told to guard the remaining disc piece. Soon after, the Freak breaks in and attacks them at their home, but are saved by Ed Machine. Get in this car if you want to live. Huh? After dropping off Scoob and Shag at Cassidy's studio, Ed returns home. Professor Pericles is there to meet him. Say what you want to say, Pericles, then get out of my house. <laughs> Dear Ed, you misunderstand. I don't want to say anything. The gang gets upset with Cassidy and they lock her in. They decide to return to Crystal Cove Caves to end it tonight. They encounter Pericles before the freak tries to grab him and the caves begin to flood. Children, there's nothing to fear. Wrong you! Fred chases the Freak as he escapes and tackles him. The Freak reveals to Fred that he is the mayor and his reasoning for the original group's disappearance, and Fred runs off. Shaggy is sent to military school and Scooby a farm. This would lead to the season two premiere where they would all get back together. I have what I came for. <laughs> The mayor's peace, you have it. Two down, four to go. Until we meet again, auf Wiedersehen, Scooby-Doo. I had to give an honorable mention to the horrible herd. It involves a new plan of Pericles to get the disc. He creates this mutant herd of skull cattle to tear and eat everything in Crystal Cove until the disc is found. This macabre herd of skull cattle you've created is costing millions of destroyedos money. My money. And I currently have 28 of my best scientists listed as presumed missing. No! No! Make that 29. After capturing the queen, the cattle are driven into the ocean. Since they can swim, they all flee, with the gang realizing what they have done. During this, Nova falls from the helicopter and is severely injured. This would lead to a spirit taking over her body in future episodes. My plan, ruined by those meddling kinder. They will pay. All of them, they will pay. Gates of gloom through the curtain come undone. The finale of the show had to be big. It had to wrap up all the loose ends and conclude the story in a way to be as satisfying as possible. And it delivers. Gates of Gloom begins with the gang returning home from the Yucatan to retrieve the heart of the Jaguar. Sheriff Stone comes to warn them that the whole town has been taken by a mysterious creature. Eventually, the gang are the only ones left in Crystal Cove, resorting to hiding in Fred's house to try to figure out what's going on. They are then attacked by a creature, which is revealed to be the Craig Stoppelbots in a drill. You robots made a big mistake. This is my house. <laughs> it 
it is revealed that Pericles has been forcing the residents of Crystal Cove to mine for the gateway. This gateway will lead to a haunted treasure and the evil entity inside. When the entrance is found, have my creek staffer boss destroy all the workers. They have outlived their usefulness. You monster! I'm not your trained monkey. I won't do it. I won't be a part of this madness anymore. The gang forms a plan to secretly invade the mines, rally up the hostages, and stop Pericles. A battle ensues, ending with the mystery machine blowing up. The gate is opened and Pericles goes in. Get these people to safety. Listen up, everybody. Follow me to freedom! And hey, will somebody please bring that sweet little dog in a coma? Thank you. Through the curtain begins at the struggles between the two groups with the keys that they haven't previously collected. How Doug Warder helps the gang escape at the, the cost of her life. After getting through all the gates, they have reached a dimension teeming with lava. They find the crystal sarcophagus which has the evil entity inside. When they are able to destroy it, Pericles comes in and unleashes it. Come Undone begins with Pericles allowing himself to consume the entity, which makes him all powerful. But the entity double crosses him and it kills him. <laughs> After all these years, I am unstoppable! <laughs> Dude, <laughs> somehow that parrot just keeps on getting creepier! <laughs> Professor Pericles? He consumes Fred's parents before having the Christopher bots find the gang. With the help of Mr. E, they escape, but he is killed. The evil Anukai are released and feed on the people of Crystal Cove, which are given to the entity, making him stronger. The spear is destroyed, but it is revealed that they were the heart all along. The entity is destroyed and the vortex swallows almost everything in existence. The gang find themselves in a new version of Crystal Cove, as if no evil has ever affected the town. The show ends with them realizing they, ha they have won, deciding to go to college together with the help of Harlan Edelson. I want you in my class next semester. I've already got you all admitted. Even that weird dog. There's a lot of middling to do and a lot of mysteries out there that need solving. Don't miss it! <laughs>